Thank you for tuning in to the best parenting show on the internet. Post Daily Dose. Of course, just as I click live, Beatrice says hello to everybody. Do you hear her back there? I am so sorry, but we're just going to proceed. We're going to act like we don't hear them. <laughs> this is Christy Saul, the co-founder of the Post Institute, coming at you live with the best little parenting show on the internet, The Post Daily Dose. Of course, I want to plug the books real quick, Brian's book, From Fear to Love, that you can pick up on promotion. Then we've also got this awesome book right here uh, on promotion at feartolovebook.com. That's our promotional website for that book. This one right here. Then we have this great book right here, The Great Behavior Breakdown. You can get this at postinstitute.com and also on Amazon. At postinstitute.com, you can actually get these two books. I have them bundled as a package. Um, I'm going to tell you something a little bit funny. Beatrice is a Bernice Mountain Dog Standard Poodle Mix. And she actually comes to my, above my waist, <clears throat> but she's still a baby, and she barks at everything. I'm going to guess that they're probably very excited because the little dog across the street is probably outside to use the bathroom. I am so sorry. We have this great workbook <laughs> that is available in print on Amazon, and then also as an ebook at postinstitute.com. So welcome, everybody. Uh, this week I have been talking about um, self-care. Ooh, and I need some. Uh, in fact, I found myself thinking, uh, remember that old R.E.M. song, Shiny Happy People? Shiny Happy People. I'm needing some of that. I'm needing some Shiny Happy People. Um, I'm needing some downtime. This week has been really busy. Oh, my goodness. Just so many families struggling and so many really, really heart-wrenching stories. Um, one of the things I've ran up against several times this week is children who come from tough places, children who experienced abuse, ch children who have witnessed and experienced domestic violence, then in their stressed out states, in their overwhelmed states, demonstrating those same behaviors to siblings and also to parents. You guys are working really hard. This can be really hard work sometimes. Your self-care is vital. It's vital. The kind of parenting that our children need really insist that we be at our absolute best. And that's not to say that we can prevent everything from happening. It's not even, I'm not even trying to insinuate that we're trying to prevent every difficult situation or that we're responsible for the difficult situations. It is a difficult situation and we happen to be the parents. Therefore, it's our job to do our best and to bring our best. And our babies really have really big needs, and it feels like the longer we're in quarantine, the more we have inconsistencies in their lives with in school, out of school, working from home, not working from home, just all the, all the um, confusion in day-to-day -day living and how to conduct ourselves and all the, um, just all the inconsistencies in our world, it makes it really hard for us as parents. And if it's hard for us as parents, can you imagine for our kids, and especially our kids who come from tough places? It's so sobering. Um, some of the stories I've heard this week have really been dark and very difficult. And I think a big piece of it is because 
we we don't have the supports that we're used to having. Um, our children don't have the outlets that they're used to having, and the tensions are getting really, really high for families where um, where we don't have cohesion, where we don't have flow, where we have that sense of being out of sync. The term the out of sync child um, is one that I find to be really interesting. It is very, it's difficult. It's difficult to get in sync. And so I don't even want to say the out of sync child because I don't really feel like it's on the child. But just knowing that there is a rhythm and a flow to family and that we as parents are the leaders in our family. We set the emotional thermostat in our family. And we're trying to do this in some really difficult situations. Ellen, I think sometimes, yeah, maybe we are superheroes because we just keep showing up. We just keep showing up. We just keep showing up. We just keep showing up, you know. Um, I'm ready for the weekend <laughs> because I want to be able to show up more and more. I want you all to be able to feel us. I've had at least three crisis Zoom calls with parents this week. And usually a lot of the families that we work with, you know, they're, you know, you guys are solid. Most of the parents that I work with are solid as can be, but everything seems so elevated. And I, I also think that a piece of it could be because we're coming into spring and everybody's got spring fever and, you know, everybody wants to be out and doing and doing and it's just, um, golly, I'm, I think we're all just ready for it to be over. We're, we're ready for this pandemic to be over. We're ready to have some sort of consistent, stable, stable structure, something that our children can cling to in terms of predictability. They need that. They need that predictability. They need us <sighs> rested. They need us rested. <laughs> I had a conversation with a mom today because she's trying so hard to take care of her son's nighttime challenges, and then it's causing her to then be hyper, you know, kind of hijacked at the brain level when she's trying to go to bed, and so she's not actually getting to sleep until like 3 o'clock in the morning, and then trying to get up and do it all over again the next day. It's just too much. It's just too much. My So my instruction to both of them was 11 o'clock. 11 o'clock, and if you need her after 11, just tell her that you need her. You know, just tell her that you need her, and she'll come help. But at 11 o'clock, she needs to be in bed because she's got a really big job of taking care of the family, and it's just her. She's a single mom. There's a lot of single parents out there really trying hard to keep it together, and um, when our kids are, are popping, that's what I call it, because, you know, it's not, it's not hard, hard. You know, it might be hard. It might be hard every day, but it's not hard, hard every day. But there's been a lot of hard, hard days for a lot of families, and um, the parents are getting really fatigued. And <clears throat> whereas before we might be able to have somebody come and take care of our kids so that we could get some respite or they might just spend the night at a friend's house or something like that, we don't have those same avenues. And so it's a lot of togetherness. It's a lot of demands without a lot of relief. And it's the lack of relief, I think, that's causing the greatest challenge, the lack of time to just catch our breath, to get ourselves grounded, to get back to feeling like we have enough energy right, to have enough energy, to have our window of tolerance expanded so that we can keep doing what it is that we've been called to do. So one of the things that I put up in the notes, and I'll make a, a separate post about it, I did an incredible interview. Uh, it's been about, I guess it was about three years ago, with a dear friend of mine. Her name is Beverly Kyer. Um, and she specializes in compassion fatigue. She works the post model. Um, she did extended extended training with Brian. I think she came to two or three camps back in the day. Um, so it was probably, I guess, about eight, nine, ten years ago. Um, and she's also the parent uh, of children with special needs. And so I think that 
I remember the conversation that we had very well, and she gave some beautiful little tips about ways to catch refreshment in our souls, to catch refreshment. Sometimes our tired isn't because we're sleepy. It's because we're lacking in opportunities to do the things that really fulfill our soul. It could be creativity. It could be some being able to spend time with friends. It could be being able to spend time with extended family, things that can be refreshing to your spirit, to your to energize your soul. Um, she just gave some really beautiful, beautiful tips. And so I want to offer to um, our social media, because I know this will go in other platforms as well, so the code is, the, the uh, product on postinstitute.com is called Surviving Compassion Fatigue. And the code to receive it free throughout the month of March is Social Media Free March. So there'll be a graphic, a post on the Facebook page about that. But because these recordings go to YouTube and then they also go to um various places where podcasts are posted. So it's on Anchor and Spotify and Apple Podcasts. So by speaking it, hopefully that will make it easier for people to be able to find this this little free offer. Um, so again, it's postinstitute.com. The product you're looking for is titled Compa- Surviving Compassion Fatigue. Surviving Compassion Fatigue. And the code to receive it free is Social Media Free March. So I think that by offering that as a freebie and just listening to two moms talk about some real-life situations and getting some real-life equipment, maybe some real-life tools that you're not used to having to use, tools where you can just take little five-minute breathers. Sometimes that's all we get. We don't always get uh, anymore. I used to say we don't always get a spa day, right? Now it may be we don't even get um, two hours to go to the gym or to go visit a friend. It may be that we're visiting with friends on our front porch or our back porch. And so um, having that time to sort of um, just get away and get ourselves refreshed has really been limited. And uh, I just... I don't know, there's just something in this last month that has just seems like it has everybody a little more activated. And um, I just want to remind you guys that they're like clouds. So difficult times are like clouds. And they will pass. They may come back. Clouds come and clouds go. Feel free to dig into, um, you know, get up, get up there on YouTube and look for some solid meditation. Look for some um, tapping. Tapping is very effective for in the moment stress and in the moment anxiety. Make sure that you are taking care of your nutrition. It's okay to tell your family, I need 30 minutes. I need 30 minutes to get refreshed. I'm exhausted. Mama is tired. Daddy is tired. We need to rest so that we can do our job of taking care of you. It's okay to say that. You're very important. You are literally the lifeblood of your family. Your self-care is not selfish. Your self-care is in the best interest of everyone. It is in the best interest of everyone for you to take time to take care of yourself. So with the weekend coming, I hope you can carve out a little time for yourself. Time to just rest or time to do something that is fulfilling to you. I hope that through that rest you're able to get that energy back up, that sense of, yes, we got this. Yes, these difficult times will pass. Being able to connect with your children from a place that has more patience more understanding, refreshing your window of stress tolerance so that the love you have for them can shine from your eyes so that you can enjoy playing with them and it doesn't feel agitating that all the things that they do, their little quirky selves doesn't get on your nerves so much. When it's getting on your nerves, it's because your window of tolerance is shrinking. It's a big red flag that says 
I need to take a break. Moms and dads need to be able to take breaks too. We, maybe we have to put ourselves in time out, you know? <laughs> so as you go through that, it helps our kids if we can let them know because otherwise it's going to get to that place where we exceed our window of stress tolerance, we spew our stress all over everybody, and then the timeout happens anyway. So if we start feeling ourselves bumping up against that edge by our edginess, by noticing how our body's feeling, by noticing our tone of voice, by noticing that we're short-tempered, that our fuse isn't as long, if we can just speak about those things out loud to our children instead of trying to pretend like we've got it all together and we're always perfect, if we can just say to our kids, look, I'm just really tired and it's making me really cranky, so I need to take a break, it helps them to understand, especially kids who have experienced abandonment and rejection, if you just abandon, they will interpret that and experience it as abandonment. If we tell them with our words, it can help them understand that we're just human too. We love them to pieces, but we get tired. We get fatigued, and we need to fill our souls. So I hope there's something in that for you guys. I know that in any given moment, we can all act out of those blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. And the smaller our window of stress tolerance, the more likely that is to happen. The more, the less we take care of ourselves, the more likely we're, um, we are to act out of those blueprints of stress and fear and overwhelm. So our self-care, filling our cup, will help expand our window of stress tolerance and it will help us be able to take one to two to three deep breaths so that we can choose love. Much love to you guys. I hope you have a blessed weekend. And remember, go to postinstitute.com. You're looking for the product Surviving Compassion Fatigue. And your code to receive this for free is Social Media Free March. And I'm going to put that at, I'm just actually going to put it in a separate post on our Facebook page so that anybody who follows us is going to be able to find it. Much love to you guys. Have an excellent weekend, and we will see you on Monday. Get to get your copy of Brian's best-selling book, From Fear to Love, on promotion. Just pay shipping and handling at www.feartolovebook.com. That's www.feartolovebook.com.